So I'm here in Cody, Wyoming at Buffalo Bill Center of the West. It's supposed to be pretty cool inside. So we'll go through if they let me film. I'm not sure if they will or not. And then I'm going to drive up into the mountains and camp for a couple days. Cody's much more dry and desert than I pictured in my head. I just imagined it as a western town up in the mountains. But it's pretty deserty around us and dry and hot. It's like over 90 degrees today. But everybody tells me this center is pretty cool. So we'll see how it goes. Check your firearms at security. So here's a <clears throat> Buffalo Bill Cody when he was young. What he looked like. Looks like this whole section is about him. Press pause and read that. Buffalo Bill. <clears throat> yeah, this big buffalo exhibit. Buffalo that used to roam by the millions and millions all across America. Some pretty cool mounts. Human uses of the buffalo, kind of interesting. Tails is fly swatters, buffalo chips used for baby powder and fuel. It's kind of weird. Rattles or blue. Bladders and stomachs, excellent containers. Skins or hides or made teepees and clothing. Fat was used to make soap. Yeah. Fur braided into rope. And the horns are used to make spoons. Yeah. Cool. Some more human uses of the buffalo. Heads were often mounted for decoration. Tongues were eaten as meat. Hides were made into coats, robes. Look at all those pelts. So there are millions and millions and millions of buffalo all across America. And just slaughtered. Look at this huge stack of buffalo skulls. So they almost went the way of the world and were extinct. Well, maybe not close to extinct, but compared to how many millions there were before, they barely reclaimed the herds and kept them from disappearing completely to hunters. So Buffalo Bill Cody said that. Well, he did say they're practically extinct. 
So nearly 30 million buffalo in the 1800s de declined to less than 1,000 by the 1890s. So they almost wiped them out off the face of the earth. William Cody, Buffalo Bill, killed several thousand. And then he started promoting their conservation. go look at so some of these big western hunters like Theodore Roosevelt, Buffalo Bill, they almost they helped contribute to taking wildlife down but then they turned to conservation and started trying to save wildlife in their middle and later years. Interesting stuff about Buffalo Bill Cody. Just press pause on these. Hopefully you can read that on your computer screen. Kind of some cool artifacts here. About his life. There's so much here, I don't know what to show you. I'm kind of rushing through all of this, so. Press pause and read that. Press pause and read that. Press pause and read that. This is model Colt, Colt model 1851 revolver, this holster. Anyway, I think that's cool. That's his. So they have all kinds of stuff in here. So they have a history about him and all these exhibits. And here's him as a hunter. Some of his stuff, his muskets and clothing, leather paints. So anyway, I could sit here forever and forever and show you stuff. But it's kind of a place you need to visit and just read and read these things. I'll show you some more cool things as we work our way through. There's a painting about Buffalo Hunt.
ranch wagon from his ranch. And they have some kind of So he had these tents and he furnished them with things that made him comfortable and that he liked as he traveled. And he had this Wild West show and he'd travel all over the world putting on this show for different people. Big collection of old guns, kind of cool. Those of you who are in guns, these are pretty cool. Look at those shoulder rests that wrap right around your shoulder. And these finger holsters. Not holsters, but finger grips. Some cool stuff here. There's one sign right around the corner I wanted to show you. He was also a rancher, owned multiple ranches. Press pause and read that. This is kind of an interesting story. Camp Monaco. You press pause and read that. Press pause and read that. There's the original photo. Thank you. You can read this quote. Here's the tree, a cutaway of the tree, the actual tree with their their sign. It grew up around the sign there. It's kind of cool. Tons of artifacts like that in here. Little storyboards. I'm not even showing you as much as I'd like to. There's an old camp trailer, wood burning stove inside of it and everything. Pretty cool. Sister, Buffalo Bill and his sister. 1890. He appeared in Washington, D.C., it says. So, interesting stuff. 
try and find some more stuff. I think I lost my family. Try and find that. For one of the things I didn't show you in here was the the Museum of Art. I think it's the Whitney Museum of Art. It's pretty awesome. There's a lot of Old West stuff in here and some amazing paintings. My favorite was this Edgar Paxson one of Custer's Last Stand. And it's just huge. It has all these intricate details of the battle and stuff. It's pretty amazing. It's kind of gory a little bit, but the it was painted in 1899, but all this detail work in here is pretty awesome. But there's sculptures and artwork. Um, most of it was with a Western theme. Some really old paintings in here too, so I really love it. I love the art museum, so come visit that too if you get a chance. They also have Frederick Remington's studio and a number of his works. Here's the but had all these artifacts in his studio so that he could paint, you know, Indian things or saddles, but. They kind of like to look at things to reference when they're painting. It has a big old easel. Hello. I'm glad you could visit these studios studio. would often be My filled with Jack artifacts. Summer, and I feel very fortunate as neighbors to spend many evenings here. Frederick and Jack stretched out in their big leather chairs, puffing away at their pipes. Eva Remington with her needlework, and myself, a rapt listener wondering at this man of genius who can work with his creative brush all day long and talk with eloquence half the night. They'll all be along soon, I'm sure. But let me tell you a little about Frederick Remington and this grand studio. As neighbors, we watched with interest as Frederick and Eva moved here to New Rochelle, New York, overlooking Long Island Sound. Frederick needs the outdoors to restore him. A place like this, where he can excel at horseback riding, fishing, hunting, hiking, and swimming. Kind of a cool painting of a stagecoach rushing away from Indians. With a brick fireplace, as you see. A lot of his paintings kind of had a lot of drama painted into them. You can see those horses really yearning to get away. And He exaggerated kind of their features and so forth so that in their, what they were doing to kind of make the horses look just as panicked as the drivers. So here's something interesting, how he used all these props in his New York studio. So, here's some of Remington's works of art. It's kind of a cool one, a black and white from 1901. Inspired by a visit to Wyoming. Looks like a photograph. Oh, that's, a, that's a painting. It's pretty cool. Here's one. Oh, this is a different artist. So, come see the museum as well.
inside a plain Indian teepee. could break these down and drag them around the planes. They have different cool different cool artifacts in here and they have all these displays of what it was like for the Native Americans out on the plains and stuff. So, again I could spend hours in here showing you every little thing but it's kind of something you just need to come see for yourself. It's pretty awesome. Painted hide. Some type of artist from a long time ago. Hogan of sorts. I'll go in there in a minute, but they have this big panorama inside here of life for the Native Americans. It's pretty awesome. Let's go inside this Hogan. If he can go inside it. So there's some type of presentation of what happens inside these hogans and so forth. I'm guessing they show the night sky up there. You can't see anything, so. One of my favorite things in this museum is the Cody Firearms Museum. It's attached to the Buffalo Bill stuff here, but. They have all the machines that make the guns, the history. <laughs> and then they have tons of guns displayed by eras, by years, and so forth, as well as historical artifacts. One of the coolest ones was some of the original firearms that they had created back in the, some said 1500s. I didn't know they went back that far. I'll show them to you right here. Look at these giant guns. Just thick and kind of weird looking. This is a Bavarian wheel lock from the 1700s. Here's one, a giant gun, six feet, um, eight inches long. Look at that big old mechanism that fires. And it's, it's how long it is, I mean, you can see that. Six feet, eight inches. Belong to King Louis the Thirteenth back in 1600s, early 1600s. These are pretty cool looking too. Here's a 
1600s gun right here. Look at all this detail work in it. Metal and some type of jewel, but that fine metal work. It's really pretty from the 1600s. And all these, this barrel work and the wood inlays. Some type of stone and so forth. Give a mechanism on this gun. This is from the 1500s, 1570s, 1590s, an Austrian wheel lock musket. So, anyway, that's probably the last I'm going to show you. I, it would take me hours and hours and hours to film stuff. I kind of rushed through here, but it's kind of something you need to come see and do on your own. So, my, my boys right around the corner took a stamp thing, and as you work your way through, you can stamp these impress things on your little fold out packet about the places you visited and stuff so it's pretty cool anyway come to the buffalo bill uh, center of the west or whatever it's called <laughs> and uh, visit the different museums inside of it it's pretty cool thanks for coming on this field trip